Now we know how Blender functions, let's start building that donut. So as before, let's, uh, well, first of all, just to repeat, make sure you are working with a new scene, completely new scene, don't want any remaining monkey heads lying around. Let's begin fresh slate and let's delete our default cube just with the delete key and let's replace it with a new object. You might remember the hotkey for that is shift A. And as I mentioned before, you usually want what is underneath mesh because these are your primitives. So we want to start with something that most resembles what it is we're building. You know, if it was a house, you might start with a cube. If it was a vase, you might start with a cylinder. In our case, we want the donut shaped one, although mathematicians call it a torus for some reason. So let's add that. Now, if I zoom in by scrolling up, we can see we have something resembling a donut. It looks like a pretty weak looking donut, you know, very flimsy. It looks like the, the donut before it's cooked when they just drop it into the vat and it's just this little wispy thing. Um, so immediately after you do some actions in Blender, you have options to change it. And the options are hidden down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you see a little box. And if you click that box, you see options. And look, we can change the dimensions of our torus. Now, something to note is that these options in Blender only appear immediately after you have done that action. If you do another action, like say, deselect your torus by mistake, it's gone, right? Because Blender has assumed you have moved on, you've accepted the state of your donut, and this is the one you want, right? Now, if you haven't done anything drastic or changed this object in some severe way, you can temporarily bring it back by hitting F9. I never actually remember that hotkey. I just remember that immediately after I have uh, added an object, if I want to tweak it, now's my chance before I move on to something else. Okay, so we could change, you know, the size of it here. We can also change the resolution. I'll use the term resolution loosely. Um, to, uh, to make it higher or lower fidelity. And a mistake that a lot of beginners make, and I say this because this was the exact mistake I made way back in 2003 when I started learning Blender, is they go, well, I need a, a realistic looking donut, so I guess I need to go really high resolution. I remember my first project, one of my first projects was for a high school film project, and I wanted to have a close-up of a face didn't realize faces were gonna be difficult, but I went really high poly, and then it was just an absolute nightmare to work with. So the problem, the reason you don't want this is that for starters, things that are high poly are very slow to render, and they're very hard to work with if you want to tweak the shape of it. But also, as you learn and you grow with 3D, you'll discover that it is a lot easier to add resolution to something later on, but it is very difficult to take it away if you've already built it into it and you don't need it. So. Long way to say, what we actually want is to have as few polys, these are called polys, uh, as you can get away with. So I'm gonna go with 32 major and 12 minor. And don't worry that it looks all jagged because we will fix that in a moment. Now the major and minor, this is really up to you, but I find that something that looks, uh, looks kind of chunky, like a fat donut, just looks really delicious. So I'm going with something around about this size, okay? And once I'm happy with this, once I'm ready to click off, I click off, the options are gone, and this is it. This is the donut that I am now working with. So how do we make this look higher resolution, less jagged? Well, one way is to use smooth shading. So if you right click with your object selected, go to shade smooth. And look at that, this is immediately better. Without getting too technical, this is kind of a fakery. It's sort of like the shader is telling the renderer that this is a really high poly dense mesh when it really isn't. It's just basically kind of like averaging out uh, face, uh, faces and anyway, it's very technical, but basically means it's not gonna add anything to your render time, but it's going to look smoother. And so this is generally what you want for something that is smooth and, and organic looking like we want. If you were rendering like architectural or like hard surfaces, like later on, we're gonna put this on a counter, then the object would obviously want to be flat. But in our case, we're just gonna use shade smooth. But you might notice that looking at this, especially if you go side on, that you've got this sort of uh, jagged shape around here, right? So the silhouette is really breaking that illusion that this is a high poly or a, a smooth looking donut. 
But thankfully, rather than adding all of that complex density into the mesh itself and then making it hard to remove later on, there is another way through modifiers. So if we go over here to our properties, right, this very confusing, lots of option looking properties, click on the wrench and this is the section called modifiers. And this is one of those uh, object dependent uh, things. So if you've got your camera selected, you won't see it. So it's only when you've got actual meshes that you might see uh, this, uh, this modifier here. So it's much easier to explain if we just add one. So up here, add modifier, and you've got a range of options here that can do a whole number of things. The one that we're looking for is underneath generate, and it is called subdivision surface. And it is a really common modifier that you use all the time. In fact, it's so common, it's actually, you can just immediately add it to any object just by hitting control one. But don't do that because we've already got it, so there. Now, some of you might have just discovered that your donut has disappeared. If that is the case, you need to go to edit, preferences, and then underneath viewport, where it's got subdivision at the very bottom, disable GPU subdivision. That will then make the subdivision perform on your CPU instead, instead of your GPU, which is maybe non-existent or not performing whatever, um, but disable that and it should appear. But if it's already working for you, don't disable it, keep it going because GPU will be faster. So what exactly is this doing? Well, it's a lot easier to explain if we look at the shade flat mode because we're not being uh, tricked by the, the smooth shading there. Um, if I set this levels viewport to zero, this is our original mesh. This is before we add the subsurface essentially. When we increase this, you can see that it is adding resolution to our mesh. And the more I increase this viewport levels here, uh, the finer and finer that detail becomes. So to explain it, because this is such a very, very common uh, modifier, it's kind of important to understand how it's working. You can see that uh, this is, uh, these squares here, these are called faces by the way. And for each one of these faces here, as I add a level, you can see it's becoming four faces, right? And then now if I zoomed in on this one, one face here, if I do another level, that's now become four faces. And then if I zoom in again, it's now become four faces. So it's exponentially adding detail. And you might also know that it is smoothing it out as well. Like this jagged edge that we've got here, you can see now becomes smoother. So to quickly visualize that, if I just draw it, like imagine you've got like a 90 degree uh, corner, right? Like this. If you add a subsurf modifier, what it's gonna do is it's going to add uh, a point here, right? Because this is uh, the extra detail. It's also gonna take that point there and it's going to average it out. It's gonna average it out between these points and it's gonna create another one there and another one there. So you go then from having that really hard corner there to having something that looks a lot smoother. So it's going to take a point and it's also going to uh, change it to make it look smoother, generally speaking. So there we go. Um, so now as I increase this, you can see it's getting uh, smoother and smoother. Now, the reason there are two options here, you've got levels viewport and levels render. So reminder, this gray area that we operate in is called our viewport. The render is the pretty version. So as an example, um, you could see if I just turned it off for the viewport, it looks very jagged. But then for my render, if I increase that to three, if I do my render, which you could go up there, F, uh, and render image or remember the hotkey F12, you can see that that donut is now smooth, but I go back and you can see it's jagged. So the viewport, you wanna generally keep it lightweight and then the render time, that's where you wanna get uh, a really nice looking pretty image. So you wanna often have two different levels. Um, in our case though, I don't really think we need to go beyond one, even for our final pretty image, um, because this with uh, shade smoothing turned on is good enough and we're gonna be adding more to the scene later on, so we don't wanna make it too complex. So this is actually pretty good. Okay, so we have a perfect donut, and that's the problem. It's too perfect. You could spend decades trying to develop a machine in the real world that, make a, that made a donut this perfect, and you never would. This is so mathematically precise that the eye will always see this as looking fake. So that's actually a problem you learn pretty quickly in 3D that things that are too perfect just look fake. So you have to spend time making things look misshapen and adding variation there like you see in the real world because your eye expects to see it. So how do we do that? How do we make this donut look a little more lumpy and interesting? I do that by changing the mesh itself. So this mode that we are in right now where we can, uh, you know, 
click on different objects is called object mode. And I know that because in the top left hand corner, you can see we are in object mode. But if I click the drop down, you can see I get a number of other options here. And these options, again, will change depending on the object you've got selected. If I've got a lamp, my little light there selected, you can see I've only got object mode. My camera, I've only got object mode. But a mesh will give you extra options here. So let's enter into edit mode. Ooh. Right, now, you can see our mesh, our, sorry, our object has become something that looks weird. It's got a bunch of uh, little points on it with lines and very technical. Well, that's because this is actually what the mesh is made up of. These little points here, which you can click on just by selecting, are called your vertices. The singular term is called vertex. I never say that. I like to just call all of them vertices, regardless of whether it's one or two, just because you always get some comments that go, um, actually, it's called vertex if it is singular. Anyway, so these are called your vertices. And if you have two of them joined by a line, that is called an edge. And if you have four of them forming uh, a face, then it's called a face. So with these, I can quickly change the shape of my object by using the same hotkeys as before. And if I want to move this, then I would simply tap G, right? And you can see it's now attached to my cursor. And then if I want to confirm its movement, I just do a single left click and there it is. Now, if I go back into object mode, like that, you can see that my mesh has changed, okay? And by the way, the hotkey for jumping in and out of object and edit mode is just tab, okay? So you can see it's just toggling between those two modes because it's so common that you want to just quickly change things that it's just uh, easily accessible by that. Now, this is okay, right? But you can see it's like, it's got like some artifacting. It's like, it's not the greatest lump right? So how do we make it look a little more uh, natural? Well, I mean, you could, you know, you move one, drag it out, okay, click, and then I move, oh, the next one next to it, right? I'll move that out, and then I'll move this one out a little bit, and then, uh, and then I move this one, out. and it's like, okay, well, now I've got the thing, but it took me like five actions. Ridiculous, right? No one wants to do that. No one's got time for that. Thankfully, there is a tool in Blender uh, just for this, and it's called proportional editing, and you can enable it up there in your toolbar. So if you enable that, now if I hit G and I move it out, you will see I get a little ring around my cursor there, and that is now changing uh, the mesh around it. Now, a lot of people in my previous tutorials were like, I don't see what's, what's going on. You have to have something selected first, and then when you hit G, you will see uh, that uh, that little circle of influence. Okay, now this circle of influence, if I scroll down, sorry, if I scroll up, you can see it's shrinking its circle of influence. And if I scroll down, it is expanding its influence. So it's only going to affect what is in that, uh, that ring there, okay? If you are on, uh, yeah, if you don't have a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can also change the influence by using page up and page down. And if you don't have page up or page down because you're on a Mac keyboard, then what you would have to do is go to key map and then change your page up and page down to something else just so that you could get around that. But guys, you gotta get a mouse. Get a mouse with a scroll wheel. I think they're, I don't know, 50 cents or just in the nearest landfill somewhere. Get a mouse because it's gonna make uh, your life in 3D a lot easier. Okay, so with this, I can now uh, make quick work of, uh, of lumpy shapes, okay? So I just drag that out. Okay, I've got a little lumpy shape there. Maybe I go down here and I pull this up just by hitting G, moving it up. Okay, so already this is looking a little more natural, right? Because even if we were making a stylized world for a Pixar movie or something like that, you can't have just a, a, a spherical looking donut, sorry, spherical, round looking circular donut because it just, your eye will see it as fake. So very quickly, I'm able to add a little bit of variation to the donut, um, just all around it, just a little bit over here. And you can see that I am uh, just changing my circle of influence depending on what size of a, a, a lump I want to make. So I just want to make like a little bit that sticks out. I can make a small circle just by scrolling up like that. Um, and you just want to do that until you get something that looks a little more natural. I might want to make the, the inner part as well. Maybe just drag that in with a smaller circle. And that's pretty good. Let's just have a look from the top. 
I might actually just drag that out and make it a little bit more like that. But there you go. That's pretty good for a donut. It's still kind of simple. It's not too detailed, um, but it's got just enough variation in it that uh, it's more interesting to look at. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. Go back into edit mode with tab. Um, donuts, when they're sitting in the uh, little vat thing, right, uh, they're only like half submerged, so then they have to be flipped. Uh, but it means that the bit that's nearest to the surface is getting less heat. So essentially what I'm saying is the bit that's around the, the donut, the, the circumference of it is usually a little bit flatter. So donuts aren't like perfectly round all the way around. They're usually a little bit flatter. So what I want to do is I want to select these vertices along here and then I want to shrink them. Now I could go around one by one like this, which is actually what I used to do when I was uh, learning Blender pre-YouTube days and there was uh, no tutorials, what I would, I would do this if I wanted to select this. Silly, because there's a, 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 a function, a tool for that, and it is edge select. So if you hold down Alt on your keyboard and then do a single left click on not the points, but on the edge, right, this little line here, you can see it's selected all the way around. So it's anything that's connected along that line is now selected. So if I want to shrink this, right, what would I do? Well, I mean, yeah, you could like move it around, right? We want to shrink it. We want to change the scale of it. So we would change, we would use the hotkey S for scale. So S and I'm going to scale that in. And I actually don't want proportional editing. So I'm going to turn that off and now scale in and just make it a little bit flatter. And there you go. See, it just feels a little bit more natural, doesn't it? It looks a little bit closer to what a donut looks like. And by the way, don't worry if yours doesn't look exactly like this, like your lump is a little bit off. Like some people get a little bit too precious with the tutorial. Like I gotta match exactly everything I do. Like I'm just working on the fly as well. So just make what you think looks good. Maybe you think this is not misshapen enough and you wanna add more, go for it because it might actually turn out better than what mine is. Now, before we move to the next part, um, how to save how to save. Blender, very, very easy. You just go save as and you just get one file. It's called dot blend. Um, very literal file extension, really pushing the limits of what a file extension can be. That's almost a word, Blender. Anyway, um, dot blend and that's it. And then next time you open it up, it's exactly like it. It's not like ZBrush where you got like four or five different ways to save a project or an object or a tool or a hate ZBrush. Okay. Um, that's how you save. Now, also, finally, I would say, uh, if you need help, because I know if, you, if you're stuck and then you leave a, a YouTube comment, you might not get a reply. Uh, if you want immediate help, I've got a Discord. So I'll put the link uh, below. So there's like a little channel in there where you can just ask for specific uh, donut help. So if you're having issues, uh, feel free to jump into that. And also, guys, don't beat yourself up. Like 3D is definitely a... Uh, has like a steep-ish learning curve. So you're in that that steep slope right now. And it's it's really common. Like a lot of this stuff is very foreign. 3D is very unique. It's very different to a lot of 2D tools. Um, but don't give up. Like it's, it's definitely achievable to learn and self-learn at home. You don't have to go to school. You don't have to pay for a tutor. Um, it's really easy to, uh, to get help online nowadays. So do make use of that Discord. Um, post uh, comments as well in the YouTube comments if you want to. Um, but I hope, I hope you stay with it. So if you're ready to jump to the next part after you've saved your blend file, go ahead, click here, and I will see you there.